What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Engineers and Friends. My name is Mike. Today we're gonna to be talking all things MIDI controllers. Are they worth your investment? Should your studio have one? Let's get started. So what I have here is the very old, very proven Icon Qcon Pro, the silver version. I believe these were version ones. I have no idea when they came out, but they came out a long time ago, yet I still have them. So when I first became an audio engineer, I had zero idea what I was doing. I just bought gear because it looked cool. I found mini controllers and I was like, oh my God, the faders are flying around. They mimic exactly what the DAW is doing. Like how cool are these things? My clients are gonna think I'm super legit. You cool, man. But at the end of the day, they couldn't care less. All they, all they wanted was a good product. And I was stuck wondering if I had spent $1,000 on something that's actually going to be useful for me or just a paperweight like some other YouTubers claim that these things really are. But I ended up loving these things. And here's why. They enable you to use your ears to mix instead of your eyes and your finger on a mouse. Picture this. You're in a dark room. You've got the most dynamic, amazing track you've ever been a part of and you're engineering it and the mix is there, it's just missing the bass drum. And you got your finger on the fader for the bass drum, you shut your eyes and you bring it up, 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 and it just clicks with the rest of the track and you know it's there and you, you get goosebumps and it's amazing. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. That's what these units can do for you. You're not gonna get the same effect when your finger is on a mouse using a DAW software mixing unit. Not to take away from DAWs. And that's, that's why I love these things. They allow you to mix with your ears and not your eyes. And sorry, we listen to audio with our ears. So let's get into the Icon Qcon Pro and talk about how to actually connect it with a computer. For clarification, no, you cannot just get an extender unit and connect it to a computer, it won't work. You need to have the main unit, the main Icon Qcon Pro before you can connect an extender. So right out of the box itself, the only things that we're gonna need is the Icon Qcon, it's power supply, a USB cable, and a computer, and I'm working with the Mac today. Before we do anything with the computer, uh, we're gonna be working right with the unit itself. So let's turn it on. You're gonna see it's firmware, 1.23, that's the latest. And then it's gonna ask us for which DAW we're gonna be using. And it can use Cubase, Logic Pro, Samplitude, Live, Pro Tools, Reaper, Studio One, and Reason. It can also use Nuendo. And there, we're gonna select Logic Pro. Logic Pro is selected. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing with my extension unit. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna turn on my extension unit one. And it's gonna ask me one other thing. So I got my firmware, and it's gonna ask me what expansion unit I want this to be. And it can go all the way up to three because this can support, this unit can support up to three extensions. I'm gonna select unit one. It's gonna ask me what DAW I wanna use. So I'm gonna select Logic Pro because that's what we're gonna be using. And now I'm gonna turn on my final one. Same thing, and this one is gonna be my expansion unit two. So I'm gonna select expansion unit two and same thing with the DAW. Okay. Now these are set up to work with our DAW and they're set up to communicate with the computer correctly. All right, next step is I've got a Logic Pro session open. I'm going to go up to the Logic Pro menu. I'm gonna go to Control Surfaces, Setup. And we're gonna install, click New and Install and now you got this huge drop down. We're gonna go down to Mackie Control. And I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive because these are not Mackies, but they run the same interfacing that Mackie does. Where are we? I must have missed it. There we go. Mackie Control. We're gonna click Add. Wonderful. So it brings up this handy dandy icon down here. We're gonna go up to our output and we're gonna go to Icon Qcon Pro. You can see the unit has already reacted. And now we're gonna choose the same for our input. And this one is good to go. All right, we're gonna repeat this process. We're gonna click new and then install. And I know that you might wanna choose extender here, but don't do that. Just pick another uh, Mackie control. We're gonna click add. Okay, we'll click off of here. 
All right, another icon appears. We're gonna to go to extender one, that's over here. You can see that that just reacted. Same thing with our input. So extender one, and that's good to go. Now we need to do two. So let's click install one last time. Same thing, Mackie control, add, okay. Now in real life, this is sitting over to the left, yet it, it pushed this icon over to the right. This is actually how it's laid out in, in Logic as well. So we're gonna click, hold, and drag to the left. And there she is. And you can see that this just reacted because now it's no longer the first uh, unit in the chain. Go up to the top here. We're gonna choose ex extender two and extender two. Okay, so you can see I have all of my units now set properly. They're connected to the computer properly. And if I start adding tracks, I'm just duplicating software tracks here. Command D does that. You can see it's a little slow to react on this laptop. All my faders are working and I can keep adding, which we're gonna do. That is why these things are pretty cool. Okay, so let's get into the features of all of this. So let's take a look at one specific channel here. Each channel has its fader, which you can see it working with my uh, logic right here. Oh, I'm not coordinated. <laughs> it has a channel select. So you can see as I hit the select button, it is selecting different channels. It has mute. It has a solo. And when I hit solo, notice that the rest of the mute uh, the rest of the channels are muted. It also has a recording uh, and a arm recording button. So you can see on the screen here, it's red and now it's not. Up top, this thing has two different modes. It can control volume and the fader itself. And if you push it in, it'll take it back to, to um, unity gain. Or if you have it in pan, it will pan left and right and then if you if you push it, it'll take it back to zero. There you go. So heading on over to the channel control, if I have more than the 24 tracks that I have, and I wanna scroll around just one track at a time, so if I'm one through 24 and I wanna see track 25, that's what I'm doing. You can see my track selecting, it's going different to the different channels. Cool. Uh, if I want to advance eight tracks at a time, I don't have that many tracks here, but that's what these bank controls do. So if I had 50 tracks, this would be super handy. Okay, if we keep going over, the function section, these are assignable functions. These control off the, just the default, your display. So if you want to like minimize your window, you can just hit any of these buttons. And if you want to bring it back, you can hit them again. Okay, moving down for assignments. I only use two out of the six buttons for this. This is where you can control plugins and different things. That's a waste of your time in my opinion. Use track to control volume and to see what tracks are where volume wise and use pan to control panning and see where each track is, has been panned. That's what I use them for. Below the assignments we have our automation bank. That's another six buttons. I only use a few here as well. I use the um, latch button, that's when you have like a vocal rider and you want it to record what the rider is doing. We just hit latch and then I bring it back to read after I'm done. Or um, I use touch where I can actually just use my fader to control the automation manually. And then I go back to read. Always important to go back to read or it's just gonna keep recording over your automation. Underneath that we have a, another bank of six where I actually only use the click out of out of all of these. And what that does is just control your metronome. When it's lit, the metronome's on and making its noise. And when it's off, it's off. It's the same as hitting K on your keyboard. To the right, we have our basic track functions. We have rewind, fast forward, play, and stop. Then the record button here is just like hitting R on your keyboard, starts recording process, and loop turns your loop on and off. Below that, we have our jog wheel, which controls our playhead. And that basically just controls where our playhead is in the track. It can go super fast, or it can go kind of one bar at a time, depending on how fast you turn it. To the left of that, we have a zoom feature, where if you're pushing the down button, zooms in, up button, zooms out. If you turn zoom off, this becomes a track selector. 
down and up. I don't use the left and right buttons. And that's really all I use these things for. Can they do more like plug-in manipulation and EQs? Absolutely. But I'd rather just use my mouse to do that kind of stuff because it's kind of confusing on here. Where this really shines is when you're mixing a track after all that's been done. You're controlling different fader volumes and pans and sometimes doing a little bit of automation work. So it's 2020 and is old tech like this worth the investment for your studio? Absolutely. Are they quirky? Yeah, sometimes they freeze and the faders can get a little noisy, unlike some of the newer units that are out there. But these things do the job and they do what they're supposed to do. And I just, I love them to death. There are other options out there. Behringer has a great line of MIDI controllers, as does Mackie, as does the old Avid C24. Believe it or not, that now works with the new Huey protocols across all DAWs, not just Pro Tools. So there are other options. Google, MIDI controllers, make your own decisions. I hope this video helped you at least understand what an Icon QCon Pro is, how it's hooked up and how it works. So there are folks out there that will tell you that these units are really just a glorified mouse and you have no business purchasing one or wasting your time on one. I disagree because when you mix with hardware, the decisions that you make are far different than the decisions you would make when using a mouse. So what kind of controller do you have? Please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what your setup is, what features you're used to working with that maybe these don't have and vice versa. If you have the new Icon QCon Pros, I'd love to hear about all the upgrades. If you like the video and wanna help the channel grow, please give it a like, subscribe, that really helps me out. And with all this coronavirus stuff going around, I hope you guys are staying safe and we'll catch up with you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, see you next time. La, 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 la.